Hello. Um, I was wanting to share a dream or a vision um, that I've had. Um, I've had many. I wasn't really sure what to do with them, and I figured the the best thing to do is to um, is to just share them. Maybe it's meant for everyone. Maybe it's meant for somebody out there who's dealing with something. Um, some of them are just so you know, it, so obvious that it's meant for everybody that you know. I'll let you know it's for everyone. Um, so, um, first dream that I'm gonna share is a dream um, where I actually uh, was in the uh, in the world like heavy heavy tribulation. Um, so the dream goes like this. I don't have anything to read off of. I didn't write it down. It's just uh, whenever I have these dreams, you know, they're pretty well just burned into my memory and they don't go away and the details are all there. The smallest, craziest, silliest seeming details are all there. So I'm just going to tell it all just the way I remember it. Um, so um, I have five uh, brothers and sisters and they were all in the dream with me and uh, we were at a cafe type thing in the middle of New York City and uh, I was wearing a black leather jacket which I do own a black leather jacket that I love to wear um, <clears throat> and I was wearing my cowboy boots which I love to wear um, which are important because for me to have those exact same clothes in a dream it's not a typical thing my dreams usually aren't that realistic so uh, those were important details uh, so we're in this New York um, cafe downtown which I'm don't live anywhere near New York in case you can't tell from my accent um, and uh, it was all my brothers and sisters and I looked outside and I told them you know we have to go we have to go and try to help people and uh, you know this is exactly how the dream started there was nothing I recall happening before it was just like this you know we're standing around we're talking and then I tell them I have to go and I have to go and help people and they told me no don't go out there they're gonna kill you and I said, that's okay, I have to go help them. And so I opened the door and I walked out. And as soon as I opened the door, there was just turmoil everywhere. Uh, the sky was like dead, like there was no light, uh, no stars, no moon, no sun. It was just dead and gray, like dark, dark gray. Like it was, like if you could imagine a sky full of ash, that's what it looked like. But anyhow, the ground, it was not brown or there was no green anywhere. There was no life on the ground. It was gray and dead. It was a pale gray color. Um, all the, like the concrete, the roads, the buildings, everything was laid out, just destroyed. Nothing existed standing anymore except for that cafe area that we were in. Um, so to walk out and to walk across it, you know, I was having to climb because the concrete was broken everywhere and some of it was raised up and, you know, some of it was, you know, down in the ground. And so it was, uh, it was like an obstacle course trying to get across it all. Well, <coughs> I remember I had my phone in one pocket of my jacket and I had a pack of gum in the other. And uh, this seems so minor, but it was a it was an important thing, I guess, to show me how desperate people would be for any little thing, any little thing they, they could get their hands on at that point. And um, I saw a lady come up to me and uh, just like her looking at me, I knew she wanted to kill me. And uh, she tried to take my gum and my phone. She wanted to kill me for my gum and my phone. And so I got away from her like really quickly. I, I ran and climbed and ran and climbed. Well, I came up to these broken steps and they were, you know, it was, I was at the top of the steps and I was needing to get down them to get to the people. I needed to go help people. I needed to go tell people about Jesus. I knew what my job was. And, uh, and whenever I turned around, all my brothers and sisters, there was five of them. They, they came and they were like, we're, we're coming to help you. You can't do this by yourself. And I said, okay, great. You know, um, I was terrified but I was determined because there was work to be done people needed Jesus this was a bad time 
the Holy Spirit wasn't there anymore. You could feel that the Holy Spirit was gone. Nothing in my dream told me that. No one in my dream told me that. I didn't see an angel. I didn't hear the voice of God. I didn't hear the voice of Jesus. But I knew the Holy Spirit was gone. There was just such horrible feeling just in the air. You could feel death and like emptiness. It was void. It was very void. Um, anyhow, so we went together and we went to go and start looking for these people. And uh, so as soon as they joined me and we went on, the dream ended and I woke up. Okay, so that was that was one dream. Um, you know, what that was showing me was that the end is coming and the Holy Spirit really is going to re be removed from, from the earth and that, you know, those of us who believe in Christ, who, you know, love Him and who are wanting to reach out and help help all the lost, um, that we have a job to do. And no matter what it looks like, no matter how scary it can be, you know, we're going to have to be willing to buckle down and put on the armor of God and get out there and go chase them down, find them and love them because this world will have no hope, no feeling of hope, no feeling of life, no feeling of anything. It's just going to be sad and sorrowful and mourning and destruction and greed and murder and all these things. You know, I saw one person and that one person wanted to kill me and she was just a girl, pretty well my age. But she wanted to kill me for a pack of gum and a cell phone. The Lord is showing just how deep and vile it's going to be. You know, that was a very simple dream. That was my first dream that I ever saw, you know, the end of the world. Um, I didn't see Antichrist. I didn't see Satan. I didn't see anybody. That's what I saw, just, you know, that basic stuff. So um, if anybody's dealing with anything like that, uh, if anybody's having these visions, if anybody's wondering, what do I do? You know, I'm a believer. Am I going to be left behind? Well, I mean, you know, the 144,000 go up first, you know, and, you know, that's the first rapture. Um, and then, you know, then the bride goes up, you know, so we have to be vigilant and we have to be ready and we have to be helping the lost. It's so important that we go out and, and we seek for those who need God because without people who, who are willing to go to them and find them, and and have it in in ourselves to share that love and not be afraid to share the love of Christ um, you know they're not gonna have any hope they have eternal damnation and we can't leave our brothers and sisters in the world like that God created them just as well as he created us because he loves them just like he loves us we're not privileged and we're not you know exempt uh, from from reaching out to our brothers and sisters, you know, uh, God's created children, we're not exempt from that because we got saved. You know, we have work to do because we got saved. You know, just like the prophets did in the Bible, you know, uh, John the Baptist, he was beloved by all people. And, you know, John the Baptist, he was working. And he, I mean, he got to work and he didn't mess around. Paul, you know, he was once against you know God's children then he was for God's children and you know everyone loves Paul you know but he worked he did work for the kingdom of God and we have to do the same thing those guys were our examples and it's important that we do that and we become the example so you know God bless all of you guys I'm gonna post some more videos of some other dreams I'm just gonna kinda try to keep this separated because there's a lot to tell and I can't get them off my mind so I figured I need to share them uh, and hope they do somebody some kind of good. God bless you guys.